Cytosonosis felis, a tick-borne protozoal infection affecting both domestic and wild cats, originates from the hemoprotozoan parasite Cytosone felis. This condition is characterized by severe hemolytic anemia, often resulting in a mortality rate as high as 90%. Notably, wild cats, especially bobcats, act as a natural reservoir for this disease. Currently, the infection is widespread in regions of Central, South Central, Southeastern, and Mid-Atlantic United States. The geographic reach of ticks capable of transmitting the disease is expanding due to climate change and associated weather changes. Cats exposed to outdoor environments or living in households with other pets venturing outdoors face an elevated risk of infection. Wooded locations that are natural habitats of bobcats and have large numbers of ticks are particularly susceptible. Cytosome felis is spread to other cats through the bite of a tick, usually the lone star tick. The disease doesn't spread between cats and also cats will not get it from eating an infested tick. Clinical signs typically start about 10 days post tick bite, initially presenting as vague and nonspecific. Acute symptoms include lethargy, loss of appetite, dyspnea, and pale or yellow gums. Invasion of reticula endothelial cells in various organs leads to organomegaly, with cats displaying signs of aversion to touch due to pain. Bone marrow involvement may result in pancytopenias, and thrombocytopenia can lead to disseminated intravascular coagulation, causing spontaneous bleeding. As parasites multiply in the blood and disseminate through the body, untreated cases progress rapidly with death possible within 2-3 to three days post-fever spike. In advanced stages, hypothermia, seizures, or coma may manifest. Diagnosis involves a blood smear examination for pyroplasms, molecular detection using PCR, and serological tests. In the absence of pyroplasms or eschizons on the blood smear, rapid diagnosis can be pursued through a fine needle aspiration of the peripheral lymph node, spleen, or liver to identify eschizons cytologically. A diagnostic PCR test with greater sensitivity and specificity than microscopy is recommended in suspect cases or when the parasite is not observed. A list of differentials should include, for example, feline infectious peritonitis, immune-mediated hemolytic anemia, and cholangiohepatitis. Unfortunately, as of now, no curative therapy exists. Treatment primarily focuses on supportive care, including IV fluids for tissue perfusion, blood transfusions to address anemia, and heparin therapy for disseminated intravascular coagulation. Antiprotosal medications, such as imidacarb and a combination of azithromycin and etovaquan, have shown varying success. A significant case series reported a 64% survival rate with atovaquone and azithromycin combination therapy. Recovery, including resolution of fever, is often slow and may take up to 5-7 days. Survivors may remain persistently infected with pyroplasms, potentially representing a reservoir of infection. Sadly, due to the lack of effective therapy, the prognosis remains poor to grave. Cats that survive the acute phase of the disease will remain parasitemic and clinically asymptomatic. The research has shown that several survivors remained immune to subsequent infections. Cytosonosis felis only affects cats and other species are not at risk of contracting the disease. There is also ongoing research to develop a vaccine against cytosonosis felis. In conclusion, a comprehensive understanding of this life-threatening disease is crucial for veterinarians and cat owners. Collaborative efforts, including effective preventative measures and ongoing research, are essential to mitigate the impact of cytosonosis felis on feline populations.